Good morning, this is Ted Wander with the Texas Library Association, welcoming you to today's TLA conference preview. The conference will be in Houston, Texas, April 17th through 20th, with the theme Relevant, Responsive, Revolutionary, and Right Now for Libraries and Life. And our very special guest today is author Sergio Troncoso. He is now the author of four books. In 2011, he published From This Wicked Patch of Dust and Crossing Borders, Personal Essays. He also wrote The Nature of Truth and The Last Tortilla and Other Stories, which won the Premio Oxlon Award and the Southwest Book Award. Troncoso received his undergraduate degree from Harvard College and two graduate degrees in international relations and philosophy from Yale University. He lives and works in New York City. Welcome, Sergio. Thank you so much for spending time with us today. Thank you, Ted, for inviting me to this conference preview. I was wondering if we could start out with just a short reading today. Okay, I'm going to read just a, a paragraph or two from the very first essay in this uh, collection of essays that came out last year uh, called Crossing Borders Personal Essays. Um, that uh, was published by Arte Publico Press, and I'm, I'm reading just from the very first essay, just a few paragraphs. In my life, I have crossed many geographical, linguistic, cultural, and even religious borders to the point where I have often asked myself, where do I belong? Who am I really? And who am I becoming? I grew up dirt poor on the Mexican-American border of El Paso, Texas, and went to Harvard and Yale. Although I was raised a Catholic by my Mexican parents, I now attend services for High Holy Days on Manhattan's Upper West Side with my wife and two boys, Aaron and Isaac. Yes, I am a traveler between cultures and religions, but I do know who I am. The question that often burns in my mind, however, is why these border crossings are not attempted by more people. They should be. I understand that it's perilous to cross to the other side, whatever that other side is. You traverse into a no-man's land. You leave your home and possibly risk alienating those who stayed behind. I have been asked by many Latino writers and friends if I am now Jewish. I know often there is an undercurrent of surprise and even anger, at least by the most weak or fearful-minded when I proudly tell them about my wife, Laura, and my children. I was at a Latino book festival recently at a restaurant with four writers. We were discussing the links and differences between Judaism, Christianity, a discussion I had prompted. I turned to a poet who had been quiet for most of the evening and pointed out that the artist on her t-shirt, Frida Kahlo, was half Jewish and half Mexican Catholic. The poet, a proud Mexicana, seemed stunned at first, then looked at her t-shirt as if she were looking at it for the first time. Yes, I said, we create pure beginnings to simplify things, maybe to build our self-esteem. But in reality, we are interrelated, mestizo, in more ways than we can imagine. First essay from Crossing Borders. What inspired you when you were writing that essay? I think it was inspired by all the traveling, not just uh, geographical traveling I've done in my life, but intellectual traveling, starting up very poor in a colonia, you know, in a shanty town right outside of the um, outskirts of El Paso, and then ending up at Harvard. And, and Yale, you know, when I went to Harvard, I thought it was near Chicago. You know, that's how, how smart I was. Um, and But I, I loved books, and, and that's why I think Harvard accepted me, and I was a, a, a bookworm. And so this essay, I think in many ways, discusses and, 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 and gets into all this intellectual traveling, this geographical traveling, this religious traveling, and being open-minded about different cultures, religions, uh, influences and way beyond the border where I began and then also trying to go back to the border and relate it to how I grew up the good lessons I learned in Isleta you know my hometown in, in the outskirts of El Paso and what I've always told people 
Islera has as much to teach places like Harvard and Yale as the other way around. Um, you know, so, so many of the moral precepts that I follow in my life, that I try to teach my children, I learned at home. I learned on the border. And, and too often I think we disparage this, this upbringing as somehow being less, but it's not. And I've, I've been an evangelist in many ways uh, for that point of view. This is an amazing story behind this essay. Will you be discussing this work in your program in Houston, or can you tell us a little bit more about that program? Uh, Latino Literature Then and Now, and I'll be uh, talking about Crossing Borders, uh, the essay collection that appeared in 2011, and also about this novel that appeared in the same year where I grew up. And, and I think the two works are complementary in various types of Latinos in literature that I think often we are a little bit uh, too comfortable with. You know, there are, Latinos are intellectual, even poor Latinos who grew up, as I did, you know, without electricity and running water, uh, eventually can end up teaching at places like Yale and discussing Heidegger, you know, with their grandmother. And I think too often we don't have this picture of Latinos in literature. I think also uh, one of the things I, I, I write about in my fiction is how Latinos are uh, bridges between cultures and religions. You know, in the novel, for example, one of the uh, children rejects Catholicism and adopts Islam. And another one that's a little bit more similar to how I am uh, ends up in New York City, married a Jewish woman, and so you have this messy family of, uh, you know, people who are Jews or, or more allied to that religion. Some of them who are Muslims, and and then the traditional Mexican Catholic parents. And and in many ways, my novel is an allegory to what's going on in the country. How do you keep a family together? How do you keep a country together? when people are adopting different religions and politics. And so th these are the kinds of border crossing that I try to, to, to open up in my work. This is clearly going to be a rich, rich program, and we strongly encourage our audience to attend this. Sergio Tromposo will be in Latino Literature Then and Now, which will be Thursday, April 19th at 8 a.m. Thank you so much for spending time with us today. We'll